there was a situation where somebody was working on their laptop they were then having to connect to a virtual machine that was their development machine. They were running inside the virtual machine. So it was a Windows virtual machine, but then they were using Windows subsystem for Linux. They were then wanting to spin up a bunch of Docker containers to run another operating system. So you've got sort of, what's that, four levels of embedded <laughs> operating systems working one within yeah. each, each other. And just to get anything to work is more like a set of box ticking form filling exercise than anything. I mean, when you start programming, the the joyful experience is writing algorithms and solving problems using you know, using this is a almost like a recipe. Here's what we're going to do. But but now it's more like there are these black boxes of software that you have to coax into operation. Um, it, How have we got to this been, point? Yeah. yeah, this should have rung alarm bells a long time ago. Like, what is the fundamental thing that these computers do is they run code, right? That's like what your CPU is trying to do. Try to get your CPU not to run any code. It's very difficult, right? It's running something all the time. And yet somehow to deliberately run programs that we want to function correctly, we've made it so complicated and so difficult Right. It's like it's becoming impossible, you know, and that's not an exaggeration. It becomes harder and harder all the time just to run a program. And like, why are we doing that? You know, because certainly if it's harder to run a program, then it's harder to run a program that does the thing that you want, because that's a subset of running a program at all. Um, and, and we just, you know, Here's another thing that happens is, um, you know, back in the old days, it was not very glamorous to be someone interested in computers. You know, I don't know how it was in other places, but here in the U.S., uh, you were basically a terrible nerd and everybody used it as license to despise you. Well, despise is not the right word, but to, to, the, to denigrate the job you. The versus nerd divide, yeah. right? Yeah. And so the people who did it were the people who were super interested in it, like for non-social reasons because there certainly mm. wasn't any social reward it was just like oh this is really interesting like programming is is fascinating in some way right um you know now you get a lot of people coming into it for social reasons i guess now because like hmm. they know that all these programmers are rich and powerful and run these big companies or you know that at least you could get paid very well yeah which didn't very used stable to be true employment yeah, yeah like that didn't you know, when I was in high school, the job counselor would not suggest computer programmer. That wasn't on the list. Right. Um, huh. and, and so, you know, it was still like doctor and lawyer and stuff back then. Yeah. So um, the thing is, a lot of people get into programming who don't see that first principles fascination in the same way that used to draw people. And so then what does it mean to be programming if you don't see that? Well, it's like I'm doing the thing that programmers do. Look, I'm typing stuff into a computer and, and making things happen, right? And so it becomes this kind of cargo culting process where you're, mm. you're acting at what you understand it to be to be a programmer, right? And then all these things you're talking about, like, oh, man, I set up a Docker container to do a, this and that, and I, I got my thing running. It isn't that cool. And it's like, no, it's really not. It's not cool <laughs> because... Because like programmers really want to make stuff happen most of the times, and and that isn't really making anything happen. It's like no, it's just you sort could, of wallowing in. It, you could something. come up with a justification for every one of those levels of abstraction. It's it's not providing nothing, but what's I think failing to be taken into account is the cost. Well, yes, there is some small marginal benefit from adding a level of indirection, yeah. but what's what's the downside? Well, and, and a lot of, you know, this is going back to the earlier topic, a little bit of complexity, but like a lot of what, because people will say you get into, or I get into arguments with people and they're like, oh no, Docker is amazing technology that lets you solve these problems. And I'm like, but those are just problems that we created like in the nineties and two thousands. Any, they're not like real problems. They're not fundamentals of computers. They're just like, well, we created all these process complexities about, do you have the right 
DLLs and like file system view and whatever. And here's a way to remedy this thing, this bad idea that we had. And, and so yeah. now you've, you've layered on the bad ideas and then layered on the mostly kind of remedies for the bad. And you're just stacking more things. Yeah. And, and that's more things that people have to deal with, right? So again, back when I was in college in the 90s on workstation class computers, we would just copy programs around and run them because they were on the same operating system. They were mostly statically linked at that time. If they were dynamically linked, the DLLs were compatible, or, you know, shared object files. These were Unix systems. Um, and like it, it was fine. You didn't need a Docker container to deploy things, right? <laughs> and then um, we somehow made a world where you need to do that. 